Jack McCaffrey, how are you? Hey, Owen, how are you getting on? Not too bad. Uh, it has been, I think, a month since the All Ireland final. Is it is it one of these years now where you're like, okay, I've got the hang of this. I know exactly how to deal with winning an All Ireland. I can actually soak soak it all in and just relax and enjoy being an All Ireland winner. I, I don't think it's something that you ever really get the hang of. Um, but the last couple of weeks have been really special. Like there the satisfaction that's come with this year and the kind of pride and in, in how things went throughout the season it, it, it's been great to be able to kind of just sit back and as you said let it sink in and take stock of it all yeah because that is the one thing that you're so notable for in terms of enjoying it all i know you've probably been told this a hundred times in interviews <laughs> before but it is the smile on your face it is the, the post-match interviews the energy the stuff that really kind of gets played down a small bit or people are almost afraid to show that i think sometimes uh, in modern day gea but not with you so with all this cocktail of things you must be looking around at your current gea career to use that word and you must be thinking this is absolutely amazing yeah, it, like it, it is great to have that the couple of weeks kind of after a final to to reflect on it from a more like the, the initial obviously reactions and stuff like like you're kind of referencing the energy and the the excitement then that that obviously subsides and dies down but it, it kind of is replaced by a a deeper nearly kind of more profound appreciation for what's yeah. going on throughout the season so you know while I'd love to recapture that buzz of the kind of half an hour after the final whistle goes I, I don't think I'd change this feeling for much to be honest Yeah, uh, I wonder does it come from what happened in the All-Ireland final last year that injury, has that changed your perspective a little bit at all? Um, yeah well it, it was certainly something that played into it Jack. like this year when I look back on this season it, it was a very different one for me you know the league campaign I wasn't involved in on, on the field um, and you know I, I did have to put in an awful lot of hard work to get back and that's something that I like from a personal point of view it couldn't have really come together much better for me yeah. and now I owe a massive debt of gratitude to our medical team and our physios who you know left no stone unturned and were there with me every step of the way but from that kind of side of things that's something that also feeds into the the, uh, the satisfaction I suppose of it at the end um, with regards to the final I, I don't think it was too much of a factor you know it, an all Ireland final is such an event and such a day in of itself that you don't really need to pull on anything else to uh, to motivate yourself or to, to enjoy it True. So yeah. I think it uh, it does that all by itself yeah what, what was the, the process of you being injured like at the time because obviously you've been an integral part of the whole camp down through the years does Jim have you involved in team meetings and stuff like that are you still around the place yeah so Jim was fantastic in terms of just giving me a bit of leeway myself so I wouldn't have liked to just disappear for the entire league campaign and then arrive back because you can't really expect to integrate back into the group that quickly so the way we would have worked it was that I attended a fair few of the games and maybe helped out with stats and stuff but um, throughout the week I'd pop up to training if there was a meeting before kind of sit in the meeting be aware of what way the game plan was evolving and then I'd leave and just go off to the gym there was no kind of expectation of standing at the side of the pitch watching the lads train, sure. which was fantastic because that's the one thing that really would have killed me to to just watch lads get better and improve while you you know are perceived to remain in the same place and you just get frustrated and probably push yourself too far in the wrong way. And so I it, it was a very it was an individual process within the group, if that makes any sense. No, definitely. Yeah, it makes total sense. And I think after it all, I think it just adds to kind of the light that everyone, not just Dublin fans, had to see you back and smiling and playing well. And I think it was the Galway match when, I think you probably would admit this yourself, you were back back at that point. Kind of like we say Tiger Woods is back back at the moment. That was the moment <laughs> oh, yeah. when, you were, when you were really in flow. And it was almost, I, I don't know, like I'm, I'm not sure what you were thinking during that game, but you must have just been delighted. I think the word you used after the game was buzzing. Yeah, that that was a great game. It was obviously an all-around semi-final, and we'd prepared massively for it. Galway had a great year, and our kind of really young coming team, who who are one of those sides that obviously respect you, but have no fear of playing anyone. So you know, we we, we prepared really well for that. From my side of things, yeah, I, I played quite well that day, and it was probably the culmination of a couple of strong performances, kind of uh, improving day on day. So uh, yeah, like look that interview was 
45 seconds after <laughs> qualifying for an All-Ireland final, I will not be held responsible for <laughs> anything I said. No, absolutely. Yeah. Don't be apologetic for a good interview <laughs> ever. Um, I know you're in a hurry because I presume no, that your, your life outside of uh, football at the moment is a pretty hectic one. It's a really interesting one as well. So you're finished with your studies at the moment uh, yeah. in UCD. Are you on the wards now? Yes. So I am working with the paediatric team up in Our Lady of Lords in Drogheda actually only for another week and a bit and then I'm going to rotate to another team up there so it's it's fantastic it's, it's a really good work environment and um, I, I, I've really enjoyed it but it's, um, it's it's been a bit different you know having to get up every morning as opposed to the, the college lifestyle where you can go on as many holidays as you want and stay in bed if, if that's what catches your fancy but uh, it, it, it's been a very enjoyable kind of different challenge. Yeah, you mentioned there that you're rotating around different areas. Is there an element of medicine that you want to specialise in? Well, so, so this paediatric job is my first one I've done. I've really, really enjoyed it. So at the moment, that's what I would say um, I, I'd love to do now. I, I'm aware that I might come across something else that would change my mind, but paediatrics is just a, there's, it's a fabulous environment to work in. The people you meet are just some of the most incredible people I've ever come across. So it's something I'd strongly consider yeah is it tough it, it can be tough um, and I'm sure as you progress further along the um, the career ladder and become more senior it, it becomes tougher at, at the moment like there, there's no like nobody's life is in my hands or anything like I'm functioning as part of a team but as a you know very junior member of it um, yeah. so I can I can imagine like you, you do see some very tough things but you you come across that in every aspect of medicine um, and the great thing about working with children is how quickly they bounce back and their you know their fantastic attitude that they kind of have about everything so yes it can be tough like anything but it, it's also really enjoyable absolutely like we were speaking to, to Phil Healy the Irish sprinter there recently yeah. and she said it was really tough being on the wards and then going to training it strikes me though that that's not going to be the same thing for you because just from listening to, to some of your teammates talk about the importance that Jim puts on your career is that there are not allowances made but certainly there's a big understanding for what you do and yeah. that being the most important part of your life uh, no, I think it would be fair to say there are allowances made like we, we've we've lads in the team who might have to travel occasionally because of work and like the trust is there that nobody is going to use it as an excuse to get out of anything and say oh I have a work gig and and, and take the piss with that yeah. everybody like is fully committed to the Dublin team but it's just an unavoidable part of life in an amateur sport that, that you have a profession and as you touched on like Jim is very keen on the work life but like even Jim and, and other members of the management team will, will miss sessions occasionally because they have work commitments and everybody understands that it's we're, we're all in the same boat and we're all like, I don't think you can question anybody's commitment because they miss something due to work. They're, they're fully on board and everybody everybody understands that. And success breeds success in both areas. One final point. Very serious allegation put your way by Eamon McGee on Twitter that you're uh, a fan of the Star Wars prequels. What's that about? I think, like, they, they're good. They're a bit wordy sometimes. But, um, <laughs> you know, some good, some good fight scenes. Um.